subscribe to Serving It Raw. Yes, Lord. Yesterday's price is not today's price. price. Everybody wanna be a boss, but don't know how they ever wanna take a loss. But if you a hustler, you can get it back. Ten toes down, let the paper stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I keep the pussy concentrate on my dog. Hey man, Serving Raw, goddammit. Yes, Lord. You done tapped into Serving Raw podcast. I am your host, Gutter Kane, the Gutter Man. And I have a very, very special guest with me today. Uh, this lady right here is not only a recording artist, but she is the CEO, a performer, a writer, a speaker, a producer, author, creator, a game changer, and an entrepreneur. I want to welcome to Serving It Raw, Miss Doctor. I said, Miss Doctor Sugar T. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm blessed to even, even be in your presence, like to be able to to talk to you. You know, you you. I grew up on your music. I grew up on you know the click. It's just man. And I and I'm, I'm just I'm excited. I'm I'm happy for all your success. Like you know, uh, I think that course you did on recognize really defined, you know, who who you are as a person. <laughs> you know, I feel like you was really going to get yours. Right, right. Well, thank you for uh for the support. I'm happy that you was able to be a uh, part of the the uh, legacy of the click. <laughs> what city are you from? So originally, I'm from Jonesboro, Louisiana. Okay, okay, yeah. that's what's up. That's what's up. The airplane nice, logo. nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so but I, I wanna I wanna give you a flower, so we're gonna we're gonna dive into these questions, put some respect <laughs> in your name. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start with some basic questions. Okay, so where are you from and how did you get your name? I'm from Vallejo, California, and um where the ladies pop they bra cut from a cloth where you would never get it bra sick with it you know what it do Vallejo all day ooh 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 false ladies pop your bras straight jack will make them think I'm Ella Raw no <laughs> I got a fuck off at the limit <laughs> you got it. Like, oh yeah no question about it <laughs> I'm not questioning my skills <laughs> I know what it is and I'm appreciative to be able to deliver them here um, and introduce the fans to reality and to one of the first generation hip hop trailblazers from the Bay. Um, Sugar T came from my brother, actually, and I originally had Sugar and Spice. We originally were a group, and then when we no longer was a group anymore because of things that we decided to do, and um, that was not on the same uh, same page. Um, he gave me the name. He said, Why don't you call yourself Sugar T? So it's a combination of my first name and the group, uh, where we were again, Sugar and Spice. So, our first song we made was called Biker Season. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Now, was, that, was there a theme for why y'all had like you know, it's like you had like E and then 40 and then B shot and B legit like everybody had like an initial and then like the name was that like well, that's a good guy? that's a really good question people never asked that but there was like um there was a reason for it so you got mines and then you got E40 was he liked to drink 40 ounces so uh he liked it to drink 40 ounces of old English so that's the okay. reason why his was like that <laughs> and then D shot you know, you can do the math. <laughs> yeah, I got, he, was, I got. <laughs> he was a um he was our brute, you know, it was a brute that wasn't taking no smack <laughs> okay. in the protector. And then we have um be legit who you know he was considered legit because he was always a, a middleman that always kind of was a mediator like type, but you could actually talk to him and you know get a legitimate conversation out of him. So yeah. 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 So it all and it all is connected with everyone's first names. So the first letter is everyone's first names. Got it. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like how y'all put that together. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, 
<laughs> now, how did now how did now how did you before they create the clip? Uh, well, what happened was we all were a big group originally called MVP, Most Vicious Performers. This was in 1984. And then right. throughout 1984, 1986, Most Vicious Performers were a conglomerate of artists that was basically our family members and neighborhood family. 95% um, was actual blood family members and 5% was neighborhood family. And so um, we all independently had groups in the middle of the big group. And again, it was Sugar and Spice and it was um, a whole bunch of other groups, the Mossy, and then there was Funk Mob and a couple other ones um, that was in the middle of it. And with that, uh, we decided to kind of branch off more so to becoming the clique once the separation of the me and my counterpart, uh, which was Spice, with whom is still my best friend today. But she, so we, I, I was, ado I adopted and helped cre uh, close out the clique. Um, <laughs> I found the clique from not being with them because they didn't want me by myself as a solo artist. So um, mm -hmm. that's how we found the click. Now, was the click, now did the click ever consist of E40 and three other people or was it always like you, D-Shot, Be Legit? Was it always y'all four? Because I saw a picture where it had like E40 and it had Max Sean and it had like two other individuals. In no, it was it was always um no it was always the click was always uh us four and MVP was um mm -hmm. you know was the different groups and their group was MVP because they were like just the boys in it originally. My brother D it might have been actually um Max Sean, I believe it was a Max Sean, D Legit, D Shot, um, and 40. They all you know, because they were MVP, so everybody would just branch into different spaces, but it was never the click. The click was only myself, my brother D shot, my brother E40, and my cousin Billy J. Got it, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> now, 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 uh, I know that most people that I've interviewed, most artists always say that their debut album was like their most, um, how do I say, uh, Kind of like when they when they were like the most happiest, like grinding the hardest to 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 put their stuff out there. And I know you kind of had what you would call almost like two debuts because you had your debut, which was independent, that still charted, by the way, just to let people know. Okay. <laughs> but then you had your actual major label debut, paper chasing. Right. So mm -hmm. when you were creating, was it it's all good? Um, so the first one was uh, was the sugar and spice song biker season, and then okay. um, and then yeah, paper chasing. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it's all good. Came with that, then paper chasing came after that. Yeah, yeah. So which one would you think uh, out of out of it's all good and paper chasing? Which two do you think you had kind of the most fun creating? <laughs> Um, I think both of them because I mean, shoot, I was I was just always having fun, <laughs> had a lot of fun all the time. So I have um both of them. It was fun with both of them. They both had different, you know, different types of fun, and um, but yeah, it was fun. And then eventually, I continued to have fun with all the other ones that I recorded and you know put out. So yeah, but out of those two, um, both of them were pretty much equal fun. I was pretty much on the "It's All Good" when I was pretty much drunk. So the whole, <laughs> the whole, the whole album is me just rapping drunk. <laughs> it was like a, I guess you would say that was the, probably the most funnest because that was the one where you know my um I was because I was a mom already you know so I would have so much fun mm -hmm. happy to be away from my kids. You know, like, oh, I'm free. I get to go hang out and party, you know. And so uh, that kind of did it, you know. So, well, how do you feel? Is, is that how you came up with Billy Badass? Like, was you talking, was you, was you specifically talking about an individual? Yeah, I just kind of always, um, 
um, I always had a problem because, you know, violence, um, you know, surrounds success, you know, it surrounds success, mm -hmm. it surrounded hood, you know, and it's surrounded, it, you know, you get all these different things that come along with, with your walk, right? Especially when you are uh, from, you know, from the, you know, from the hood, basically, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so sometimes everybody don't know the aura of what it takes and they don't, there's an energy that comes with it, you know, sometimes in different spaces and places for different reasons. And so because of that, you know, it made me like hate violence. I was like, you know, this is just horrible that, you know, the neighborhoods, the people, the funk, the this, the that just don't make no sense. And I really found a, um, a disliking for uh, for violence, black on black violence. And it really uh, made me, so that's what made me write it. So I gave a story about, you know, it was a combination of different times of what I've seen combined, you know, with different situations and came up with the character Billy Badass. Damn, what was that? Who threw that rock at me? Hey, hey, look what? Come here, you little hard head boy. Come here. Who was that? I knew a boy named Billy, daddy thought he was cool, thought he was too damn cool to take his ass to school, but little did he know, it would have paid in the end, he had to be the class clown to keep up with his friends, at least he thought they were his friends, he thought they was them, so when it came down to it, they turned to Nino Brown, Billy badass couldn't go out like a punk, everywhere he went, he had a strap in his trunk, strap, tack, ready to pump, drove a high school chef, he was tremendous pump, he had a name, in the dope game, thought it was a that he can claim his fight. He was down for me. He be down for you. Down for everyone. In his whole crew. His mind kind of lagged as far as being black. We already got enough folks on our backs. The poor folks. The white folks. Every other race, man. It ain't no joke. He seemed to be real. He thought his game was true. All you had to say was bull when he would act the fool. Billy Bad. He thought he had game, but he was lying. He was lying to the game, Billy Bad. He thought he had game, but he was lame. He was lying till he came, Billy Badass. He thought he had game, but he was lame. He was hella lame, Billy Badass. He thought he had game, but he was lame. He was hella lame. I remember the days when the party was on. If it wasn't a party, he would make it go on. He didn't give a damn if the party was bucked. He'll come to the thing doing that old school stuff. That jealous thing, it never failed to see. Instead of sticking together, he made it a game. Black 
people killing each other for no reason and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Unnecessary violence and whatnot. Trying to keep a name up, you know? But then I see it's all good. You lying when you're doing the jelly in. You know what I'm saying? Stick together. Come up together. Don't be jealous of each other. Be still with your black folks. Stay black. Be black. We got enough to work about already. You know what I'm saying? When they're in your business in the night, it's all good. Got to it. talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I feel like there was a Billy Badass probably like in every town and city. Mm-hmm. It's always that one. <laughs> he had to sell a boo and he'd act a fool. <laughs> he was had game, but he was lame. He was lame to the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, like, I just watched that video again last night. I was like, man, I was like, boy, Sugar T was such a head of her time. Like, that's real talk, Gutta, because I'll be listening to that stuff too, and I'll be like, wow, I talked about all this stuff already. I was really ahead of my time about recognized, being a boss. You know, I'm sitting here looking at all these uh, the newer artists calling themselves bosses, and I'm like, no, nah, they're not bosses. No, no, no. Because bosses don't give up their sex, you know, and foolishness. They don't do that. They, it's a different type. It's a different type of boss today. They're, you know, I don't know what they call them bosses today, the women. You know, it's like, nah. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, this altering of the body and altering of the, you know, uh, these messages of over-sexualized behavior and just the nakedness, the it's just a mess. I, I don't understand the element of what uh how that became a boss today, because that wasn't the boss of yesterday. And it's still not the boss of today to me, no matter how much money or how many sales they get or how much they, you know, are able to flood the airwaves and the digital waves, it's still not bossy. <laughs> I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. Now, I know one thing a lot of people didn't know or they have not ever asked you, but what was it like acting on the sketch comedy show, The Lyrics Lounge? Because I saw an episode where you was like, uh, it was kind of like a Western. <laughs> yep, I remember that. I remember he said, like, howdy, cowboy. Yeah, yeah, And he was like the one with the little limp, the walk and the limp. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just, like I said, I, I just I just watched it the other day. It's on YouTube. I'm the deaf man in town, and I demand some damn respect. He <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Howdy, Missy. You probably heard my rap. What, your old age or your heart or breath? I'm the deputy. What that mean? You supposed to be tough? That too, but I'm also freaky with my handcuffs. I don't go on dates with the handicap. What's missing from my arm is where my jammies at. Ooh, you macking at me, honey? Where your head at? This gold in them thorn hills I'm trying to get at. Who did that? I know you ain't gonna let them do that. I'm a handless missy. Baby, move back. Hold up. I know y'all ain't trying to leave. Better get out of here. Oh man, please. Now freeze. I'll arrest a boat for you. Look at the little monkey getting all emotional. That's right. I'm the short arm of the law. You better shut up before we beat up you and your broad. I know you ain't fit to let them disrespect me. You supposed to be bad. You better protect me. I'm a South Pole, big boy. Quick draw, outlaw. For God's sakes, there's women in here. Y'all take that outdoor. Don't worry about it, Mac. I got it under control. Last time you said that, you got hung on a pole. I was up on the pole because my cat was stuck. Shut up. Pull up a cup and finish these young buck. I'm Willie the Crook, Stone Cold Killer. Didn't you get caught jerking off by the river? I thought you looked familiar. Man, it wasn't me. I used to beat the boat for you, you and your cousin D. Ha, ha, ha. What you laughing at? You wasn't punk in school. My sister had your back. Every time you got chased, you caught an asthma attack. Laugh at that. Used to get beat with the belt. You went to school with extra clothes because you peed on yourself. And don't ever try to show up in front of your buddy. What time is Don't y'all got to go to a bottle? <laughs> Now don't make me have to come back and say it again. That's my song, Piano Man, play it again. Ooh, 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 I just love me a man with a shot on Yeah, I'm feeling you too, baby. Let's go hop up on my horse and go wild to wild, wild breast. I mean, <laughs> wild, wild breast. Well, she easy, Jeff, it's too easy. <laughs> That 
that is so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was that was fun. That was um, you know, uh, somebody had called me. They was like, look, you know, somebody's down there in L.A. from New York. It was like, you know, my boy is there out there about to do this project, and um, they're casting. You should go down here and see if you can get on it and get casted. So I went and drove, you know, from the Bay to Bay to L.A. is about, um, let's see, the Bay to L.A. is about five hour ride, you know, and about a 45 minute okay. plane ride. So I drove. I was like, I'm supposed to just drive down there. And when I did, you know, I got there and interviewed. And when I interviewed, they was like um, fascinated by me popping my gum. <laughs> Because I would pop my gum, which is why I ain't got my feelings in my back teeth now, because of popping them out. But anyway, the bottom line is, I, it was a natural thing for me. I was just being me. And they oh. was like, fascinated, like, way, whoa, we need that. We need that on the show. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> like, okay. So then they, when I did the casting and I did the part they asked me, you know, I was headed back home. As a matter of fact, I had gotten back home after the part was casted and mm -hmm. they called me back and it was like we need you to come back we want you to be on this first you know on the show we want we want you to be on the series um so i didn't know i was going to be on the, the whole series i just was thinking it was just for that one show and i think they were too but the more things were casted and the more they um you know seen i guess my abilities and how you know i connected the more they wanted me in another scene so next thing you know i'm i'm there as a co-star on a regular basis a regular guest star um doing the voiceovers writing helping with the writing and um and acting and doing the cypher so i stayed on it the first season and um the next season they wanted to bring in a new york cast i guess some of their other friends and that season um went and i wasn't necessarily included in that scene I waited around to see though, but they kind of want to use a different cast. And when they did that, they they uh, got rid of me and another one of the girls, Amber, from the uh, she was from the West Coast too, and she was the cast in that um, uh, from uh, what was the name of that group, the Five Footers, and they oh. kind of uh, dropped me and her, and brought that East Coast cast on. And when the East Coast cast took over for that segment, for that season, um, the third season wasn't picked up because they didn't have enough numbers. So um, they should have kept the first one. We was rocking. We was rocking out. The numbers were sky high. <laughs> so uh, and, and the fact that you was writing, that was gonna, I was going to ask you about writing, but you already covered that part. <laughs> yes. And it was beautiful because, you know, a lot of the people that guest stars, because, you know, at the end we have to cipher. So we would bring guest people on. And it was beautiful because the guest people that was brought on, they was all like coming to see me. They was like, oh, we want to see, we want to meet Sugar T. And so I remember the brat, when she came on one time, she... Um, uh, she, they, they kind of, once they got other stars, cause I was a guest star, I guess, you know, they're like, we got somebody else now. So, you know, you, you, you can sit out on this one. You can sit out on this, uh, side, the site on this cypher. So Brad was like, Nope, uh -uh, I'm not coming out unless sugar tea coming out. <laughs> she was like, Nope, I'm only here. Cause you know, basically I guess she wanted to meet me and she liked me and respected what I offered, you know, my what I put in the game, but she was like, nope, I'm not coming out unless Sugar T coming out, so they had to bring me out. <laughs> oh, so it was, it, was a, it was nice. It was a nice run. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Yeah, because I just noticed, I was like, don't nobody ever ask her about that. So I was like, they don't, know. actually. You are so yeah. right. They don't. They don't ever ask me about it, and I'll be forgetting that I, <laughs> I'll be forgetting about it, too. <laughs> yeah, I actually got a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm casting for a movie in June. Um, right now, and then I also wrote a movie that I'm going to be um, casting for and producing shortly uh, as well. So I'm going to get back into acting. Uh, I'm working that out. This I'm, be, you know, of course I, you know, the Bay Area we take a different approach when it comes to certain things. So instead of waiting for somebody to cast me, you know, I'm producing my own. <laughs> and in between oh, there, somebody the cast me great. <laughs> what do you do? You, can you tell us the name of it? It's called Hip Hop Her. Hip Hop Her? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's called Hip Hop Her. Yep. Yeah. 
Shoot, shoot. Yeah, that's good right there. Cause I ain't gonna lie. Cause you was in obstacles, wasn't you? I was. Yeah, yeah obstacles, and then I was in uh, b boogie. What is it called? Oh man, boogie. I can't even think of the name. Um, it originally was called um, um, shoot. I can't even think to be honest with you. I got. They can go to my IMDb and see all of them. It's a whole lot of them. I just can't think of all of them. Boogie Beach Bash, I think, was the name of it. Boogie Beach Bash, and I think that that's by Brian Hooks. He produced that one. Then most re recently, it was what are you, what are the chances? Was another one that I was just in, which was my one of my brother's other movies. And uh, oh. recently, yeah. And then last year, I did a movie. Um, it's coming out this year. I can't remember the name. And then this June, I have another movie that I'm casted in. So I don't really, you know, go out my way pursuing movies. It just sometimes if it comes to me, people like come and get me, then I'll, I'll jump in. But, you know, movies take a little bit of um, attention and I got a lot of stuff going on. So um, if it's not a campaign, a campaign that I got, then it, it ends up being a project that I produced or put together or trying to you know promote so um so but when they call me and, and it's the right time i been, i enjoy jumping on okay what, what, now which one is more fun for you uh acting or uh making records um you know what um so i i enjoy them both equally um i enjoy them both equally um I don't act uh, like I should and like I could <laughs> and probably need to be. So I don't get to enjoy that as much, but I'm going to start because, um, but I, I like music pretty much equally. It just depends on how I feel. You know what I mean? So I guess, you know, the high, it's nothing like the high of the stage, you know, that high when your crowd, they, they know your music, they like you, they still, you know, especially a woman like me that's been around all these years and, you know, they're, this ageism mm -hmm. they have a whole ageism element with hip-hop for women so older women so they don't necessarily when they do they just pull the same ones out that pretty much that is always i guess they got they can reach or i don't know why it's always the same one but i'm, I'm figuring that piece out but the bottom line is they don't necessarily appreciate the older what a lot of what the older women brought they went through a stage now they're appreciating it a lot more but there was a stage when they really dropped us you know no there was no support there was no appreciation and you know and they, they kind of buried our brands with these new brands and now that all the new brands sound the same and doing the same you know same thing and i think that there's a crowd for that and there's still the crowd that's that's for us that's authentic and that's looking for more than just sex money alcohol drugs violence and stripping mm -hmm. okay gotcha. yeah so I'm glad, you, mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that little last part because about because my next question is, is 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 how do you feel about the current state of hip-hop you know, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, there's a, I think it's great. The fact that, um, so the, the curse, I think it's a self-destructive, uh, it's very self-destructive. Um, there's a, there needs to be big mama needs to step in, which, you know, is this conversation. Now I've turned into big mama, hip hop's big mama, the big mama hip hop. Okay. I'm gonna have that conversation since you asked the question. So at this point, She's no longer Sugar T. She is now the big mama that is totally connected and understand the hip hop element. So the problem is that the history um, is what I understand as well as the present. And, um, and, the, and the problem is that if we don't, if we don't get a handle on, uh, on having some loyalty to the different groups that, um, that create the culture and the healthy part of the culture, um, then it's just going to be it's self-destructive behavior because um, it, it helps basically counsel people um, when others don't necessarily uh, engage and you have to push those who are the creators of the culture that keep it healthy um, you basically push them into doing other things because if you don't support them um, then you know, they have to do something else to survive at the end of the day. And so, um, and if they leave you to the wolves, then, you know, you'll be left with just what you're supporting. And that's foolishness. 
sex, money, alcohol, violence, drugs, stripping, and bullying. And at the beginning, it's great and it's fun and it's cool, you know, when you're young and you don't know nothing else and you're at that place of rebellion and of trying to figure it out. But as you grow, you will see the the, the danger in that behavior from so many different levels. And so because of hip hop's you know, the mindset of those who are the followers of hip hop, they're responsible also of keeping the culture safe and healthy for themselves. So it's self-destructive when they don't support those who are the culture um, creators that keep the space healthy for everyone. Um, and so that's one. So I, that's a part of, you know, me, what do I feel about it is that we have to put some balance to that and this should be um, talked about as much as possible. Secondly, mm -hmm. um, and this is all parties responsible from the ones that are watching it the, to the ones that are pushing it to the ones that are um, that are implementing it. Every all parties hurt in the end at, at the end of the day. So um, so there needs to be balance and more diversity. And Hip Hop 50th, I think, brought uh, back, you know, the ears and the eyes around the legends, around the culture keepers, you know, around the ones that actually contributed, you know, because Hip Hop is uh, probably one of the only um, genres that ne don't necessarily respect their elders and appreciate them. Um, and I think that sure. the yeah. older, those that are older in and around a culture, they are appreciating it now more than anything and they understand but because the majority of of others who came after the culture keepers that brought the balance in the game um they're getting a lot more exposure quicker reaching a lot more people quicker at one time and they're able to be targeted through the algorithm. They can target the youngsters, you know what I'm saying? That don't know no better. And so because of that, it makes it a little difficult to, you know, to reside in that cesspool. And then the fact that there is an oversaturated <laughs> uh, industry, you know, of everybody wanting to do it. Um, it's kind of uh, along with others who are not even in hip hop that are still taking up some of the space, you know, um, you know, we we gotta uh, take heed to to being. Um, we gotta take heed to what it takes to keep keep it to keep it balanced. So that's my take on it. Um, the fact that the fiftieth came through that was the best thing that ever happened. Um, the fact that there is a lot of opportunity for the older artists that know how to ride it you know we know how to survive thank god um i think it's great uh ageism is rapid you know we need to stop that because they have no respect for the elders in this game and they need to learn how to um many do but a lot don't and so um it's self-destructive when you don't respect and appreciate those who came before um because you lose an opportunity to get some real game and real wisdom and we'll be calling what we're calling bossiness <laughs> now, which is not bosses, <laughs> stuff that they're called a boss. I'm like, uh, how is she a queen <laughs> and how is she a boss? Is she a queen of stripping or is she a queen of giving out sex or is she a queen of showing her body or maybe in that way, but I don't really see no queendom and none of this crap that they got going on with these new artists. I'm sorry, with the majority of the new artists. So there's some that has come out and it's in the middle of this stuff, but the main ones that's always got the controversy that you always see and that they're always showing, you know, trying to, you know, showcase and present and push on everybody. Um, it's just foolishness. I mean, it, it, it's, it's messy. You know, you got them from fighting their boyfriends and putting it all out in their business to get people watching to toxic relationships that, you know, people are cheering on to. I mean, it's just a mess. <laughs> so, you no, know, so I, I got mixed feelings. <laughs> okay, okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I feel like hip hop is the only genuine, the only genre that puts a, a age limit on their artists. And I'm like, I don't understand why would that be the case? You know, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of game that you can get from a uh, veteran artist, you know, because uh, a lot of the mistakes that obviously like y'all made can actually let the newer generation know like, okay, this is probably how you should do some, do this instead, instead of doing it this way and stuff like that. That's why I was like, I was kind of glad to see like how you 
and like E40 and a lot of a lot of y'all from the click actually found other avenues uh, of revenue, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so that's why I was like, you know, okay, they was really they was hustling, hustling, hustling. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, are there well, well, in that case, is there any new female artists that you do listen to? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, to be honest with you, um, to be honest with you, um, I I totally agree with you. And it's not just that they would get wisdom from um you know, about what mistakes to make, because it's not just about them taking from us, because that's a problem, too, is a lot of the younger people want to get information, want to take this, but they don't want to give nothing back. So we, it, it's got to be a reciprocate, you know, give and take as well on both people's, uh, both sides, you know what I mean? But they get wisdom, you know, from us being in life and lasting this long <laughs> and being around, you know what I mean? So still around, because a lot of people didn't make it, you know, a lot of people... Um, you know, they experience the good, the bad, and the ugly, and they know how to move around in all areas, and that's everything, you know. So, um, so that's kind of um, the part I think is it's added to what your purpose is of why the youngsters should definitely rep- re- uh, recognize the elders. Um, it should be also that they want to inspire us too, you know, like, wow, you guys, you know, y'all did this for us, y'all you know, put in your work and, you know, you guys worked hard and now you're not only working hard, but some of us are raising families and got multiple generations that we have, you know, that we have parented and stood through the test of time and took taking care of our responsibilities. Some of us have built biz, great businesses around it and all kinds of stuff going on. So, you know, it's a whole lot that they're missing out on. Um, and, uh, and, and again, they can inspire us too, just by allowing us to give back and also their energy and wanting to collab and understand the balance of all generations coming together and the importance of that and the value, you know, in that, you know what I'm saying? So, but in terms of, you know, liking, um, I'm on my 25th album. Um, you know, I've probably got about 30, 30 albums right now, but, um, I can only release so many at one time and put so many campaigns out at one time. So I'm trying to keep up with my own self because, you know, you go in there and, you know, go in the studio. I can drop a song in a heartbeat, you know, and it's bam. You know what I mean? But of course, mm-hmm. you know, getting behind it and putting the whole campaign and getting major exposure and getting yourself to getting everybody's space and face and place. You know, that's where it takes your energy, you know, to have to focus in and. Uh, you could only do one at a time without confusing everybody. So at this point, you know, the Do It Like Me and the uh, Beat It Up singles are the two that are um, standing out. And of course, there'll be others coming along with it. Now, you asked me about um, the uh, newer mm-hmm. artists. I'm trying yeah. to find mm-hmm. some that I do like, to be honest with you. I like some stuff that um, Sweetie, <laughs> I find oh, some yeah. little stuff that she do that's really cute. Um, but then I find some stuff that gets over sexual and that's when I pull back. Um, mm-hmm. But I do like some of her music and plus because she's from the Bay. Um, I love, I, I can't say a, a lot of newer ones that I listen to. I just haven't really listened to them. Um, I I keep my ear to the to the music, to the streets, to the music, to the YouTube streets, to the spaces where music is. Um, but uh, I, I run a business, you know, throughout the day and listening, sitting up, you know, listening to a bunch of music is not what keeps me going every day. Um, I listen to a lot of I'm an educator, you know, and I, you know, run run a school and you know, I have staff and I got, you know, I have a museum and I own a beauty business and, you know, and, oh, and of course, <laughs> I'm the, you know, I, you know, oversee my own career and then I, you know, have a domestic life going on within my own home and my own two generations, you know, going. So, you know, listening to a lot of music is not what I do. So I'm not saying there's not any good music out there, but I just, uh, there's not a lot that's laying in my lap that I'm able to, um, I've been seeing a lot of w- girls popping up on the feeds though, where they have their little mics in the middle of the road and they have some good, pretty good <laughs> messages. Like, so I see there's conscious girls coming out with, I don't even want to box them in to say conscious, but just women who can talk more about other things besides just sex and drugs and violence and stripping and foolishness. 
So um, okay. I'm, I got my ears open. I'm gonna start writing them down because they always ask me on these interviews like, who do I like? And I never can remember nobody's name. So I'm gonna write them, start writing them down. But for okay. the time okay. being, yeah. <laughs> but I like um a, a, a few of them. Uh, some guy artists. There's some uh, some guys out here. Guy out here. I can't even think his name. He's pretty good. I see him putting out some good me messages. Stunner man. He's been putting out some good. Stunner boy. Been putting out yeah. some good uh, good uh, messages um, and good music. And um, other than that, I can't really think off top uh, that there is a whole lot. Um, but I'm sure there is. And again, my ear ain't right. on the block like that. It's, it's, oh, I, got <laughs> I just, I just figured I'd just throw that in there, you know, yeah. just like, <laughs> but uh, I'm finna switch gears here because mm -hmm. uh, I want to discuss your community works and your entrepreneurship. Okay. Your, 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 your success. And, um, and what do you feel is your biggest accomplishment? But you started, you got like a little bit ahead of me, which I was like, okay, cool. We're on the same page. Like you started talking about the different things that you got, you have going on. So mm -hmm. I what okay, so what all do you have going on as far as like community works wise? Like you said, you uh, run a school, you have the her museum. So I have a museum and I have the Work and Well Project. So the museum is our is our division within the Work and Well Project that empowers women and girls and promotes smart arts. Uh, we also promote community wellness. And our goal is to empower people with the tools to be healthy, safe, economically empowered and inspired. So we serve multiple generations within the Working Well Project, um, as well as vulnerable populations. And um, and then, and yeah, so that's a whole, you know, we have a variety of services and programs um, and collaborations that uh, help change lives. Um, our SOS project is one. Um, and then which you know includes us working with girls uh we got under the sos model which is save ourselves save ourselves save our seniors and save our sisters and so um so that's kind of our our setup there and if people are interested in learning more it's just too much to like share but right now we do have a girl initiative where we're you know presenting um opportunities for girls in, within the SOS project. And then of course the museum, you know, we have arts exhibits and different types of exhibits that um, help empower women and girls and entertain uh, community as well. Um, and then, so that's pretty much the initiatives within the, now we have, a, um, I do have Sprinkleman School of Music and Vision. And um, within that is the Sprinkleman Learning Academy. And that's an online school platform. Um, and we have a variety of services within that. We do one-on-one. -on -one. The coaching and development is the academy coaching development and exploration platform. And, um, and that has a variety of personal and professional development courses, along with some other courses that are dealing with the music in and around music, entertainment, and media. And, um, and that's, you know, a support to the Working Well Project and the Her Museum but it's a standalone um, where we implement those services. Um, and people you still have a boutique, right? Hmm? You still have a boutique, right? And of course we have the boutique, which is uh, online retail, wholesale and distribution. Um, and we produce product lines for ourselves and others. So there is a new product line that's coming out. It's a hip hop uh, product line called Hip Hop Diamond that I'm getting ready to release. And um, it will be a beautiful run to see uh, it do well and, and get in the hands of people who are looking for the beauty in hip hop and the diamond in themselves. So um, so that, that's pretty much the gist of it. And then we have media, you know, Sugar Rush Media, which is a part of the social enterprise, um, you know, where we, we present and implement branding and, you know, set people others up for success with the things that they need to implement their business and their brand um, in a professional manner. Damn. Mm -hmm. Girl, you got the well, I'm speechless. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so what do you feel is your biggest accomplishment? <clears throat> the college too and got your doctorate. Yeah, I do. I carry um, two AAs, which is a uh, Associates in a liberal studies. I have a bachelor's in psychology and 
three masters. One is in organizational management, uh, masters in um, supply chain management, and a master's in Christian counseling. And then I do have two doctorates, a doctorate in humanities and an honorary doctorate in music. And I'm going to go back working on a different doctorate that I'm interested in completing too. And of course, a variety of certifications along the way from digital marketing to managing anger to domestic violence. And, you know, I mean, it's in the substance abuse counseling. I mean, I can keep going on and on just, you know, the, you know, the certificates that I've collected along the way to implement some of the work that, you know, other work besides music that I do. Okay. All right, man. <laughs> yeah, you got your feeling a lot of stuff, boy. <laughs> well, I'm kind of at the tail end, so I just have that. I think I have two more questions left for you. Uh, so uh, this one is the one I ask all my guests, and I want to know who is Sugar T's top five favorite rappers? They can be dead or alive. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. So I'm going to say Tupac was one. Okay. Um, which is my friend. They and I saw the picture y'all put together back in the, uh, when he was at the, was I think it was a practice looking hard? Did yes, it? you got it. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Tupac was one for sure. I'm happy you said Dale or Alive. And my brother's one, E40. He's one of my favorite rappers. Oh, cool. um, mm hmm. And uh, Lauren Hill, hands down. She is definitely. Uh, the top tier of my women favorites. Um, okay. mm -hmm. yeah, and then uh, Shaka Khan is one of my favorites. Shaka Khan. Yeah. So that's four, right? Yeah, the four. You got one more. And then my fifth is, oh boy, so many others, but I guess I got to find one out of all of them. Um... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The OJs. <laughs> the OJs. OJs, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, you okay? You went old school. Old school. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. Well, uh, uh, two things. Uh, little sub things. Uh, on that picture you took with Tupac, mm -hmm. did you? Did you? Did you throw it up the fucking? Yeah, probably was. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then, yeah. uh, and then, whenever you talk to D Shot, tell him that he, you know that song, uh, your Huckleberry, mm -hmm. he did for the, for the Booty Call soundtrack. Yes, tell him I love that song. I still play okay. that song today, to this day. Yeah, yeah. Let D Shot know that. If you like, want to interview him? Let me know. Okay, yo, yeah, most, most definitely. Yeah, D Shot okay. is, yeah, D Shot okay. to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. all right, and then uh, my last question is, is Is there any new stuff that we can expect from you? That, uh, well, besides the I know you said the movie that you mm -hmm. like, that you stated a lot, but is there anything mm -hmm. else? Yes, I have a new hip hop beauty brand that I'm releasing. Um, there will be some new fragrances coming out. Um, there's my 25th album coming out, and following that will be another album. Um, so if you respect a few singles uh, coming out, you can follow my YouTube channel to stay connected to things that I do um, on my platform, yeah. rather podcasts, or rather releasing the music, you know, or rather um, post. And um, we, we have a whole bunch of, you know, community um, orientated uh, projects that are available to the community. So we'll be presenting it in different places and spaces so people can have access to bringing it into their areas um, a lot more um, during this season. Um, and then, of course, expect me on tour uh, a little bit more with um, in other places besides um, the, the regular places that I'm in. Um, what else? If again they want to follow me, my long at Sugar Tea is right there at Sugar Tea Official. So Instagram, yeah. you know, Facebook. Um, there's a hacked Facebook. Don't follow that. And then there's the real Facebook that I have to start fresh from. That is called Sugar Tea Official. So Sugar Dash Tea Official. I'm not gonna hold you up, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, from from Serving It Raw podcast, from mm -hmm. especially from Gutter Kane. I want to give you your flowers and say thank you, Sugar Tea, for all your contributions. 
Okay. I appreciate everything that you've done. And I really, really, really appreciate you sitting down today. And uh and I'm a, I'm gonna stay tapped in with you. So if any time, you know, like I said, if uh if you ever wanna if we ever wanna, you know, obviously do another interview or talk about like once you do your new releases and discuss, just you know, just kind of keep the people knowing, you know, what you're up to and, and what you're working on and stuff like that. I would I would love to do this again. Okay. Well, thank you for and having so, me. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, most definitely, most definitely. I can't even, like I said, like I, I'm, I'm excited. I can't even stop smiling. Like I'm just so happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> nah, well, but thank like I said, you. I'm a busy person. Yeah, and tell tell Alex, right. as I said, thank you too. He was more than, you know, helpful on everything, getting everything set up too. Good, I sure will. <laughs> but I will, right. I will. I will be keeping in touch with you. Okay, all right. Well, you take it easy, oh, okay? Just make sure the coke fire. Told the jeweler cut some links and bring the gold higher. He want to shoot it, he hot-headed, he ghost rider. Send him through your shit like Robin Givens with the old iron. Swinging, fork in the glass pot clank. Holding the boat, they ship sinking. I make one brick, two without blinking. They was sleeping, now I got them rethinking shit. 